everyone, I hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. Now for today's invasive species episode, we'll be heading over to South Africa. South Africa's home to some beautiful landscapes and of course some very large mammals, reptiles and birds. And because this ecosystem is so competitive, you'd think it would be quite hard for an alien species to survive here. But this couldn't be further from the truth as South Africa is the fifth worst affected country when it comes to invasive species. And I'll be going through just a few of them today as in today's video we'll be going through five invasive species found in South Africa. Our first invasive animal calls the freshwaters of the United States and Mexico home and it is the red-eared slider. Now red-eared sliders prefer slower moving waters where they feed on a wide range of food items, anything from animal protein such as insects, earthworms and snails. But as they mature they tend to be more omnivorous, feeding on a wide range of aquatic plants. And on this diet they can reach a pretty respectable 40 centimeters or around 16 inches across the carapace. In their native habitat they don't seem to cause much of a problem as even though their carapace shields them from the majority of predators, they are still fed upon by alligators, crocodiles, raccoons, skunks and foxes. But outside of their native range, this is a very different story, as they are included on the list of the world's 100 most invasive species and have been illegally introduced into many countries around the world. The main reason behind this is the pet trade, as the red-eared slider is the most popular pet turtle in the world and as they can live to up to 70 years in captivity, many turtle owners get bored of their red-eared slider and release them into the wild. And this is exactly what's happened in South Africa where they have spread like a plague across the wetland ecosystems. And as the red-eared sliders are semi-aquatic, it's very easy for them to spread across large areas. And these exotic reptiles pose a threat to the indigenous terrapins by competing for food and also through parasite transmission and disease. As this species also eats aquatic plants, they can drastically change wetland ecosystems, which are very important to a large number of native animals. Controlling this species has proven to be a very hard thing to do, as there's a reason why they are one of the worst invasive animals in the world, as they're very hard to catch and they can spread very quickly. But hopefully some of the large famous predators in South Africa can help to keep this turtle's numbers under control. But for our next species we'll be heading to the freshwaters of Eurasia as we have the European perch. Now the European perch is very similar to the American yellow perch, but the yellow perch tends to be more brightly coloured and the European perch get a little larger as there's not as much competition in European waters. In its native range the perch is a predator, feeding on small invertebrates as well as other fish such as sticklebacks, roach and minnows. And on this diet they can reach a maximum size of around 60 centimeters or 24 inches. So it's easy to see how such a large predatory fish could have negative impacts in an ecosystem where it doesn't belong. It's thought that the perch were originally introduced into South Africa by European settlers as both a sport fish and a food fish. In these new alien waters there is a lot more danger from much larger competition. But this hasn't hampered the European perch as they've proven to be very successful in these waters which is bad news for the native fish. One of the ways in which they've become so abundant is by the strange structure of their eggs as these eggs are normally slimy and ribbon like and normally get stuck around the feet of wading birds. These birds then fly to other water sources and in turn transport the eggs. And these predatory fish don't only compete with the native species and eat them but they're also known carriers of EHNV. This virus can prove fatal to many species of fish and can thus affect the fishing industry. So although it's a very popular species in Europe, it is still causing problems in South Africa. But for our next species we'll be heading to the mountains of Tibet and northern India as we have the Himalayan tar. Tar are close relatives to the wild goat and the Himalayan tar is one of three species of tar. These mammals are very well adapted to living in mountainous conditions as they have relatively small legs compared to their body which means they're very good at balancing and can easily travel across the terrain of the Himalayas. Himalayan tar spend most of their day grazing on grasses and browsing leaves, but they do need to keep their wits about them as these tars can sometimes fall prey to snow leopards. And when it comes to talking about the Himalayan tar as an invasive species, it's quite a strange subject, as in its native range, this species is listed as near threatened, but despite this it has been introduced into Argentina, New Zealand, the United States and of course South Africa. Most of the reasons behind this are thought to be hunting and in some instances farming, but this is not what happened in South Africa, as in the 19th 30s, two Himalayan tars escaped from a zoo in Cape Town and the majority of tars in South Africa today have descended from these individuals. And as Table Mountain is very similar to the tars natural habitat, it was almost a home away from home. And as there are very few predators on Table Mountain, they've been able to reproduce at a very fast rate. One of the main problems that comes with their spread is that they contribute to the loss of endemic plant life and they're also known to be quite aggressive and their presence threatens the reintroduced species, the clip springer and the indigenous antelope. So although they're quite a loved species, they still can cause damages to the ecosystem. But for our next species we'll head back up to the freshwaters of North America as we have the bass. Now obviously there are many species of bass in North America 
Australia, but quite a few of them have found their way to South Africa. One of the worst invasive species is the largemouth bass. Largemouth bass were originally introduced into South Africa in 1928, but these fish pose little problem and turned out to be very easy to manage. But later on in 1980, the Florida largemouth bass was introduced into South Africa, and as the South African climate is very similar to that of Florida, they were able to spread rapidly and grow very large. And when they moved over to these waters, they had to change their feeding habits, as instead of feeding on shiners and small sunfish, they now had to mainly feed on tilapia, yellowfish, and sharp-toothed tetras. These bass were originally introduced for the fishing industry, and for that purpose they've been a massive success, as these invasive bass are known to grow into giants, with the record weighing just under 16 pounds. As the largemouth bass can decimate small fish populations, you aren't allowed to release these fish back into the wild once caught, and people are encouraged to go out and fish for this species. So even though they're one of the best sport fish in the world, if you're in South Africa you really shouldn't put them back in the water. But for our next species we'll be heading back to the fresh waters of North America and the fresh waters of northern Mexico as we have the red swamp crayfish. Now crayfish are famous for being one of the worst types of invasive species and the story of the red swamp crayfish is another reason as to why. These crayfish were introduced into many parts of the African continent, mainly for use in farming and some were thought to be escaped pets. But the red swamp crayfish's introduction into Africa has become world famous because of its devastating consequences. One of the things that makes the red swamp crayfish such a problem is its ability to travel across land. Most crayfish species can do this, but the red swamp crayfish has been known to travel miles across land. And in South Africa they're known to feed on floating and submerged aquatic plants, which normally provide refuge for small fish and other aquatic animals. They are also known to feed directly on the native snails and freshwater crabs. This crayfish species doesn't just affect the ecosystem, as it also affects the economy, as this species is known to hover around nets, where they feed on all the dead fish before the fishermen have had a chance to pull them in. And this not only ruins the catch, but also destroys the nets and other fishing equipment. And because of these negative impacts and their ability to travel across land, there are great fears that they may enter the Great Lakes of Africa. And as this could alter the ecosystem in some of the world's most famous lakes, there are large efforts to try and control this species. So this truly is one of the worst invasive species in South Africa, both for the ecosystem and people's livelihoods. But that's about it for this video. If you have a location you want me to cover in the next video, then leave it down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.